Thank you very much. First, I want to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me and uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm a clinician, I'm an internist, I'm also specialized in gastroenterology and I'm a psychotherapist too, trained uh, also in for hypnotherapy uh, by the group uh, of Peter Wobel in Manchester. Um, and there are no conflicts of interest. So what is the rationale for psychological therapies? Uh, we know that the most patients, or not patients, most individuals who are suffering from symptoms of IBS or functional bowel disorders are not attending doctors and we call them the non-patients and there is a self-selection because we know the uh, difference between those who are not attending the doctors, the non-patients and the patients is more in the psychological and psychosocial situations because more than 60% of uh, patients in referral centers have psychological disturbances, life stress, trauma, and uh, you know all uh, psychological and physical sexual abuse are very common, uh, more often in patients with functional GI disorders. Uh, the proportion of patients with psychological disturbances uh, in primary care is about 20%, in, uh, in uh, specialty practices about 40%, and uh, within the referral centers, it is about 60%. So we know uh, 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 about this more. Uh, uh, there are a lot of studies uh, that have shown that psychological disorders affect 50 up to 90% uh, of patients uh, with IBS. And out of the Peter Wobel's group, Miller has shown that 38% of patients uh, at the tertiary center seriously contemplate, uh, contemplated uh, suicide uh, as a result of the symptoms, not because they are so anxious or they are so depressed because of the symptoms. And uh, moreover, the number of psychiatric uh, di diagnosis predicts the number uh, of days of restricted activities and the average annual cost of IBS was estimated to an individual's productivity about uh, 300 up to $750. So <clears throat> I want to speak about the questions, uh, are psychological therapies uh, effective to reduce gastrointestinal symptoms in the short or and in the long-term effect? Uh, can uh, our, our psychological therapies able to improve mental health and the daily functioning? And uh, are psychological uh, therapies able to save money? Because we know there uh, is a very important issue for patients and for caregivers. There are a lot of studies available now, and uh, most modalities uh, include cognitive behavioral therapy. This helps the patients uh, to cope with uh, the symptoms and maladaptive behaviors, uh, teaching more uh, the adaptive way of responding than the psychodynamic interpersonal therapy provides the patients with insight uh, into why symptoms develop and help to understand how emotional state is related to stress and symptoms. And then the multi-component combined is uh, two methods with relaxation and stress management, and hypnotherapy, a medical uh, hypnosis uh, combines gut-specific relaxation suggestions with ego stretching, stretching suggestions, also very important, and I will speak more about uh, hypnotherapy later. Uh, there are several, uh, there are many systemic reviews, and I will show the latest one, Ford, um, more of them, uh, Ford uh, published with colleagues in GUT 2009, 20 randomized control trials, and uh, five years later, 2014, they published an uh, update with 32 randomized control trials with psychological therapies and included 2,189 patients. <coughs> and they estimated the number needed to treat with each uh, method uh, for the cognitive, sorry, for the cognitive, uh, for the cognitive behavior therapy, uh, it was estimated for uh, three in with nine randomized control trials. 
for psychodynamic, uh, psychodynamic interpersonal psychotherapy number needed to treat was estimated 3.5. Uh, two randomized, uh, randomized control trial and the multi-component four with five trials and hypnotherapy. The number needed to treat was also four with five trials. And there's, there was uh, surprisingly a relation or not, not uh, no um, effect with relaxation alone. So it's obvious because of the psychologically disturbed and depressed and anxious patients, we need also psychotherapeutic uh, talks and not only uh, checkups or yoga or other relaxations. Uh, this is uh, the fourth study, 2014. They estimated also the effects of antidepressants and compared it to psychological therapies and they showed two new uh, modalities of therapies, cognitive behavioral therapy via internet. And this seems not to, to be effective. There was no uh, uh, effect because uh, there are only two studies and uh, the heterogeneity were very high. Uh, a little bit better was multi-component psychological therapy via, th via th telephone. But if we combine and they combine all together, the number needed to treat for all psychological interventions uh, was four and no side effects were reported in all the studies. Compared, uh, the number needed to treat with antidepressants was four, but there were a lot of side effects. The number needed to harm was about 2021. 20, and yesterday Ford uh, talked about uh, the, uh, the probiotics and the number needed to treat for the probiotics is about seven. And for the medical uh, to other therapies, we know the number needed to treat is from five up to 21. So it is very effective and has no side effects. Uh, more recently, last year, Laird uh, published a short, uh, systemic review and meta-analysis uh, and looked at the short and long-term <coughs> efficacy of psychological therapies for uh, IBS symptoms. Uh, they included 41 studies, and this is a busy slide, but you can see here the zero line, and most studies uh, favored the psychological treatment. Overall, there is a, a significant effect, and we can say, or they concluded, that compared to control conditions, and control conditions were active and non-active. Active means uh, um, supportive talks uh, or symptom uh, reporting and uh, the non-active were waiting lists. And uh, <coughs> compared to this control condition, psychological therapies were effective at improving uh, GI symptoms immediately <coughs> after the treatment. And then uh, they looked at the uh, mean effects of psychological therapies for three uh, follow-up intervals immediately here, and then uh, one up to six months and six up to 12 months. And they also have shown that after short and long-term follow-up period, psychotherapy effect remains significant. You see there is no difference sometimes. In some studies, it seems to be better than <coughs> after uh, the, the therapy. Um, one year later, this year, uh, they published also a, a review about psychological therapies on mental health and daily function. Uh, they, they included 31 uh, studies, uh, 21 cognitive uh, for hypnosis, three psychodynamic and two relaxation. And the same picture you see, uh, the main effect on psychological therapies on mental health uh, was also uh, the same that uh, compared to control conditions, psychological therapies were effective at improving mental health. And uh, the daily function showed in 18 randomized controls, the same picture you uh, have here, the uh, standard difference in means, very significant, uh, the <coughs> favors the psychological therapies for daily functioning. And so we can say compared to control conditions, psychological therapies were effective at improving daily functions too. And if you, uh, and they compared also the uh, treatment modality, here are the nine studies uh, with cognitive therapy, uh, the four studies with hypnosis, uh, two studies with psychodynamic, 
and you can see there is no difference about uh, w between these uh, modalities but relaxation again in this study has no effect relaxation alone so psychotherapy types were comparable in the magnitude of the effects on daily functioning there are uh, there is also good news because uh, this is a good news we know that not every modality is available in, in each country and, and uh, city and so you can take what you uh, get uh, and another good news is that there is no difference if uh, you uh, offer the, the psychotherapy in group setting or in an individual format. Uh, this is very important because we know that the costs are immense for the patients and the caregivers. And there is a study by, done by Greed, published in Gastroenterology, and uh, he, uh, they compared uh, routine management and uh, looked at the costs per year per patient, routine management compared to paroxetine, SSRI, and psychotherapy, only eight sessions. And you can see there that the most uh, effective therapy, I think, with uh, no uh, side effects is the cheapest one. So there was only psychotherapy associated with significant reduction in healthcare costs. So the Rome Foundation recommended, uh, depending on severity, uh, all patients need physician, uh, a very good uh, patient-physician relationship and stress reduction symptoms, medical treatment. But uh, most uh, patients who are attending the referral centers have refractory symptoms and need psychotherapy, psychological therapies. Uh, and or the uh, SSRIs or tricyclic antidepressants. And my opinion is we should not split the patient into the brain and uh, their mental health and into the body. And uh, I prefer the integrated psychosomatic care up to this. Uh, we should uh, look at some, uh, uh, some uh, departments who do that. And one of them is the department at Manchester, Peter Vogel's department, and Miller out of the group. Uh, has shown uh, an audit of 1,000 patients with hypnotherapy. There is a hypnotherapy uh, group uh, integrated in the gastroenterology center, and they have shown with 12 sessions uh, within three months, and the primary endpoint, endpoint was 50 points reduction of IBS symptoms, uh, that 70, 18 uh, percent uh, uh, reached the primary endpoint, and in the mean, uh, the reduction of points was 129. You can see here before and after for pain, for bloating, and other symptoms. And they have shown it has a long lasting effect over eight years, published before. And we also published a randomized, uh, uh, we published a systemic review and meta analysis. Uh, with eight randomized controlled trials with gut directed hypnosis, including 464 patients with IBS. And uh, we can say that gut directed hypnosis has a long term effect in more than 50% of patients with refractory uh, irritable bowel syndrome. And this is very important because most of the uh, tertiary centers uh, care for refractory patients. And this is one what we do also. We offer in Vienna group hypnosis at our gastroenterology department and short psychological interventions for IBS and IBD patients. Uh, we integrate this in the uh, ambulance. And we wanted to show that it's also effective in group therapy. 100 patients uh, we randomized to hypnosis or supportive talks. In one group, we included six up to eight <coughs> patients. And we published this in uh, Gastroenter American Journal of Gastroenterology 2013. We have shown a long-term effect. Um, immediately after the intervention, 60% of the refractory patients uh, had adequate relief of IBS compared to 40. And all, I always talk to my, patient, to my uh, students and my colleagues, this is very important to know that supportive talks are also very effective in refractory patients because this control group uh, got only the uh, supportive uh, talks. But after one year, uh, you can see uh, more than 50% of the uh, hypnotherapy group had an adequate relief but only 25% of patients uh, with 
out of the uh, supportive group. And here are the long-term effect published is this one. Here is the uh, IBS impact scale uh, for general fatigue, activity, sleep, emotional eating. And this is non-published. We have done now a four-year uh, follow-up. And you can see here, it seems to be even it's better, but it's the same effect after four years. And uh, it was really surprising for us that 70% of patients continue to practice the self-hypnosis. After four years, uh, they uh, get an MP3 player or a, a CD uh, with my voice or the voice of the other <coughs> hypnotherapists. And you can see here the uh, improvement of um, the patients is uh, from the fifth session on. So, only five sessions have an effect. Uh, this is what we heard before. We know that the uh, visceral pain modulation is in, within the limbic system, the locus of gut control, and it, uh, the limbic system is important also for reflective and effective aspects of uh, the sensation. And we know that, uh, as shown before, FGID patients show overactive stress response to general stress and to GI symptoms. And uh, it has been shown by Lewin in 2015 that the effect of hypnotherapy and educational intervention on brain response to visceral stimuli is very impressive because here you have also the expectation of a highly, like we have heard before, expectation of high intensity uh, distension before hypnosis. And you can see here are uh, many regions activated and after hypnosis, it is the similar uh, picture uh, as we see here compared to the healthy controls. So this is one of the last slides I uh, put it in because yesterday there was a question. Uh, we now looked at the gut-directed whole hypnosis effect and the gut microbiome. And this is really, uh, these are preliminary data unpublished and I maybe can tell you more at the next uh, meeting, but we have seen, uh, that we did a 16 SRL <coughs> microbial analysis with Illumina sequ sequencing. Here in the upper level you see before hypnosis for the non-responder and the later responder. And here you see after the hypnosis. And you can see the ratio between the Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes is here the same before and the non-response was after hypnosis and there seems to be and there is also a modulation of the uh, of the gut microbiome after hypnosis in the responder group but we are looking more into the details this is the film level and we look at more in the uh, species so i can conclude or we can conclude that psychotherapy or, or psychological therapies are beneficial in ibs reduce GI symptoms, improves mental health and daily functioning in the short and the long term. Uh, the format of psychotherapy group uh, versus individual or the psychotherapeutic modalities, uh, cognitive behavior, psychodynamic or hypnotherapy do not moderate the efficacy and the number needed to treat is three up to four. And for me, it's important that hypnosis can or should be integrated in an overall care package, also in the group setting, at the gastroenterology, tertiary center, or hospital. It is easy, it is cheap, it is short and harmless. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>